we got some great news courtesy of wwwd magazine big up my nigga samuel ross samuel ross formerly of a cold war fame is back my nigga samuel ross is back he's back like cook crack now at first he did say he was coming out no leaving fashion for good he sold the majority or don't know he sold 100 percent of a cold war um he's not in charge of it at all he kind of handed the reins down to some designers that are already there who are kind of um taking over and as from what i've seen so far they haven't missed a beat it's kind of kept on keeping on so clearly Simon ross has a good foundation there for them to kind of keep on from um and it seemed like he was going down the fine art contemporary artist sort of lane which i love so this is something that's always kind of been a dream of mine later down the line to kind of be a contender for like the you know con you know what you call the turner prize somewhere down the line i look up you know my fucking idols and icons like steve mcqueen and shit and what he was able to do with his career something that i definitely would love to do kind of you know dip into different sort of like um avenues and shit and explore different fields so i felt like that would be a great way for him to go obviously a lot of the insulation and artwork he's done over the years has been really impressive but now he decided to kind of dip his toes back in and be a man of many times once again and re-enter the apparel fashion realm by launching a new label called sr underscore a so this is interesting this is an article courtesy of wwd that kind of focuses on his return to fashion after leaving and heading into the art world so we'll see what this is all about because i'm really excited to see what he has going forward so this is courtesy of wwd it says a cold war founder returns to fashion with sr underscore a samuel ross atelier um so let's kind of put it out i also love the fact that just a little imagery thing obviously the guy's j j jacked right he loves he loves a good workout like i do i do love the fact that he constantly does this imagery like he loves this part of being part of his branding like he, it's always like in some sort of stark background with a couple of dumbbells maybe a squat rack maybe a medicine ball but it's not done in a cringy way because i think there's there's some guys that do it there's like a brand of founders now i feel like the founders are like i don't know is it like cole buxton represent clothing there's a there's a breed of founders now at the moment streetwear founders who are like these like they look like white they look like white trust fund boys like uk version of like trust fund kids like rich kids who like you know instead of instead of going to miami and just snorting coke off of strippers asses they put their dad's trust fund money into creating a brand and they were taking pictures of like porsches and them in some screen printing factory some shoe that looks like a mcqueen that isn't a mcqueen like you know flips on like saint laurent stuff that isn't a saint you know that sort of stuff they do that weird you know they do, they do that weird shit so they do all that weird shit and i feel like a lot of that stuff is a little bit naff but i feel like sammy ross does that imagery and how he presents stuff very well like you know the whole working out thing without it coming across a little bit cringe i don't have to describe it but if you know you know there's a lot of those guys out there the ones that kind of run down the street topless and that have like you know quasi running clubs that just another avenue to sell more merch you know you know the ones i'm talking about so it's courtesy of wwd this is the following samuel ross the multidisciplinary designer who sold his remaining stake in a cold war to tomorrow last february is embarking on a new fashion journey so he's been more than a year out of fashion wow it felt like just yesterday isn't it last february so not this year but last february shit is embarking on a new fashion journey called sr underscore a which stands for both samuel ross atelier and studio research attire the first collection was released thursday via lookbook shop between ross's homes in english countryside and into london oh, that's the life in it that's what you want bro. that's the dream have a crib in london and have a crib in the fucking countryside that's the dream man one crib in london to do business and shit and shoot the shit when you come down and visit and then of course a crib in the country for the fam you know the kids can go play out in the fucking fields your dog can actually run and stretch its legs and shit like good life man um it features a relaxed fit um wabi sabi handmade garments produced by british and european small-scale manufacturers there are also leather goods accessories including recycled leather sorry recycled silver signet rings handmade in the uk oh i love this this kind of seems a little bit like um what's that guy called in west london i forgot his name i was gonna work at that store once i forgot the fucking name of it i wish i remember the guy's name but if i remember it um he had a brand that did a similar sort of thing very small um very uh you know, very purposeful but very very small things done in very small quantities high quality and shit materials are sourced from leading italian fabric firms leather tanniers and silk manufacturers ross had ross said the zen like silhouettes such as the billowing hoods seen across the jersey and outwear were not to be spiritual and philosophical pursuits 
There is a monk aesthetic on how clothes feel. My father was a spiritual teacher and a preacher. He had some quite famous figures who trained under him. And when he was in his early 20s and 30s, growing up in a spiritual household has taken some effects on here. Yeah, I, I love that sort of shit. I, love, I just love the uniformity of it. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how he dresses as well. Do you know what I mean? He has a, a particular uniform that he kind of abides by. So I love the fact that, you know, he's taking that sort of thing and applying it to his own clothing. Um, Ross said SR underscore A represents a return to wearable luxury. We have been doing work with LVMH, Moet, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, Apple, Nike, Collier, and in the fine art space for a few years now. Fucking you know, hell, look at those name fucking drops, isn't it? But this is the first real push into wearable luxury. The focus of the clothing is on craft, the idea of leisure, exploration, and durability, he said. Um, the, it's less about very full frontal aesthetics, and it's more about the beauty of living with garments and be beautiful fabrics, working with a robust supply chain that isn't about hyper growth and holding those relationships. Added a designer who's made the MBE in the King's Charles 2024 New Year honors. That's fucking sick. Yo, I, I love that. I love that. If there's fast fashion, there should be slow fashion. You know, there should be a yin to a yang. I love that. It fundamentally comes down to questioning what is luxury for the millennial and Gen Z generations and where should luxury be going after a streetwear boom? Yeah, I remember somebody actually said the other day, actually on Twitter, they were like, fuck, man, streetwear is actually done in it. I was thinking, what? what? What do you mean by that? And basically someone said like, yeah, like you go to any like high school or college now and most of the kids that you see there are wearing like thrifted stuff, of course, but mostly like designer shit. Like kids aren't really wearing streetwear brands like we used to wear back in the day. I was like, oh shit, that's actually a good point. Even Fear of God. I don't think a lot of kids would see Fear of God as streetwear. For them, that's luxury. So a lot of kids are wearing Fear of God, Fear of God Essentials. They're wearing fucking Rude. I don't know. They're wearing Balenciaga. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're wearing all this fucking shit in school and streetwear isn't really hitting the same as it once was. Um, the designers plan to release one collection a year with all the items available on a made-to-order price-on-request basis. Following the online launch this month, SRA plans to partner with a retailer in the fourth quarter. I love this, by the way. I love that he's able to do this, probably because he's got the money from selling all of his shares in the Cold War and maybe because of all the fucking projects he's also done because I feel like something that's maybe something he's probably learned from Virgil, R.I.P., all those collaborations, right? Being a fucking, having crazy work ethic allows you to make so much money during the year, invoice after invoice after invoice. You can then use those funds to then start doing all your little cool projects. And sometimes doing projects that are what you would deem to be like, you know, passion projects. Things that probably won't make any money, but you're just doing it for the fucking fun of it. And you can kind of take those chances because you're not relying, you know, on that money, like to kind of pay your bills. That's already been done by other things. So that's fucking cool. I love that. Um, you see a picture here of Samuel Ross wearing one of those blue parkas. The anorak looks fucking sick. I wear the fuck out of that, mate. That looks so. It looks like a. It looks like a really well-made fishtail parka. You know, that's what it looks like—a really fucking well-made fishtail parka. Samuel Ross seen wearing the first collection. Prices will be dynamic, he said. People will inquire, and then all prices according. So no, people will inquire, and then we'll price accordingly. There will be a layer of bespoke consideration that we'll take on board. Every label on the garment will be hand signed and stamped by me. An authentication process. I love that. The brand's most intimate audience um, will be the tight knit community that Russ has formed over the years. For the first chapter of the brand, it's really about supporting a community of like minded friends and peers who will enjoy the product. I am sure that they will naturally evolve across the next six months. SRA was born from Sammy Ross's Associates, a vehicle for Ross to collaborate with brands including Hublot, Nike, and Beats. Oh, look at that. Look at that tote bag. That's beautiful, isn't it? I love that tote bag. I would look at that. Fucking hell. That's really fucking nice. Very big. I love a nice formless tote bag. Nice big pockets on the outside. A nice generous strap to put over the shoulder. A nice silk looking, I won't say silk, but whatever that strap is to kind of hold it in hand. Some nice leather details. Ross said the brand is looking to appeal to those who seek comfort in life. I want someone to be able to walk into an insulation and not have to think too hard about the jacket, the pants or the hoodie because we've done the thinking for them. I believe people will be able to assimilate and make these pieces their own quite easily. Ross added, there's this sense of intimacy. Maybe it feels like a little less cerebral than some of my work before, which I think is just a maturing of my voice in fashion. By the way, talking about his voice in fashion, talking about voice in fashion, this, does this not sound like the most like dumbed down version of Samuel Ross? Usually whenever he's speaking, I feel like I'm, I, I, you know what I mean? I feel like a fucking dummy. <laughs> whenever he's speaking about clothes and shit 
because he's always so heady and up above when he's speaking about things and thinking about things so deeply. But I wonder if this is like a purposely done thing where he's kind of considering dumbing down some of his speech and how he kind of articulates himself to make sure he appeals to the broader public like myself <laughs> who are maybe a little bit dumb. Because, yeah, he sounds fucking, he sounds like, you know, I, I get everything he's saying here. I don't need to read over it three or four times. Big up Sammy Ross, man. Um, in the eyes of Yi Ning, Ross's longtime business partner, who's originally from Singapore, who helped the Cold War scale to 20 million in revenue at its peak, SRA is a independent and profitable vendable goods atelier, meaning the prices of the garment will increase when demand goes up. Instead of generating a high gross margin, as we've done with a Cold War, SIA will operate under a lean, profitable commercial model, attaining gross revenue on seven figures by adopting differentiating structures and economics of scale attuned to each product category, she said. So, yeah, great to see, man. Great to see. Happy for him. And, like, you know, I'm a big fan of people pursuing their passion projects just for the fucking for sake of it and just to fucking shoot the shit and have some fun. Why not? Why the why not? And then in the process, if you're able to fucking build a seven-figure, six-figure fucking brand, why the fuck not? This is some of the stuff that's available in the collection here, courtesy of Vogue Runway. Um, we've got a signet ring here, as you can see, pictured. I'm not too sure if that Hublot is also involved. I'm not too sure. Next slide, we've got, look at that trench. That no, Look at that parka. That parka is fucking gorgeous. I'd wear the fuck out of that, mate. That need, that doesn't need to be said, does it? I'd wear the hell out of that parka. That parka is beautiful. In that green color. It kind of reminds me of the quintessential, like, you know, fishtail I'm sure it's got a name because I think I have, I have one um, and I'm sure other people have them too. I think I've seen a picture of Simon Ross with a vintage one too. It kind of reminds me of that kind of quintessential fishtail parka sort of shape. But it looks fucking beautiful. I'm a big fan of that one. Um, let's continue. What else do we have here? We have the tote bag again. I love the little leather accents or badges on the outside too. They look pretty cool. And that raw leather, that kind, whatever that material is, that leather material, that kind of, it almost feels like... Um, What's it called? That kind of bare naked leather thing as well. The good thing about that, because I've got some bits of it on a bag. Over time, it kind of ages and wears in really well. So that's pretty cool. You've also got a nice trench here. You've also got a hoodie. Oh, I love the hoodie. That hoodie is really nicely done as well. Um, it's, it's a bit of a V-neck on the inside. I also love the fact that he's removed the drawstrings. It's never really a pet peeve of mine with hoodies. I hate drawstrings because I think for the most part, we don't really use drawstrings. So I wish hoodies wouldn't come with them. Um, so no drawstrings on there. A nice V-neck shape, nice colors. Um, that that logo is such a so that shape of the logo is so distinctive as well. Over time, that hue on that Parker too is fucking gorgeous. That electric blue hue is amazing. It reminds me of that um that paint. Is it the painter's coat that that photographer they used to? I think R.I.P. That photographer who passed away recently. But it looks fucking amazing. I love the fucking look of that. It really does look amazing. I love everything about it. Um, let's continue on. You got the attribute Parker. You've got another Parker here in the black sort or in a darker colorway. You've got the you got the bag. Oh, look at this! I'm not sure if it's like a parachute, waterproof type of jacket, but it looks fucking amazing. It looks like it could convert into a tent. It looks like, it looks like a poncho. Probably it's a poncho. It looks fucking amazing. The, the combination of the browns and the yellows looks really cool. Another nice long trench. You've got some sweatshirts there included as well. You've got more sweatshirts there in the signet ring. And also you've got Sammy Ross in the lookbook too, wearing the parka. You've got the parka there again in green. And some bushes. More parka in blue. Yeah, that parka is standout. That parka is fucking special. That looks fucking good, man. I'm a big, real big fan of this. So yeah, big up Sammy Ross. That's probably the favorite look of the whole entire collection. This looks fucking sick. Can't wait to see this stuff. Um, in person, I guess, when people have it out and about, I'm sure we'll see it soon with a few people here and there. Um, yeah, it looks fucking sick. I'm sure maybe that logo from what I can see here, I think in each corner, I'm guessing it's a letter, so probably it's like S R and then underscore and then A. I guess probably in each corner, which is probably four as well. But yeah, all in all, really cool designs. Love what he's going for. Love the slow approach to it, and I hope this works out for him. I think it will. You know, he's got loads of practice already with what he's done with the Cold War, so I'm sure this is gonna fucking kill it. So, of course, check out, you know, SR underscore A for all of your needs. Big up Samuel Ross. Let's continue. Let's, let's, let's continue. 